Hi friends, welcome to your body. Your body is there for you, always and forever. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you wished for just a little bit extra time to finish the examination? Or, in a situation where you just missed out on answering a question because time ran out? Especially in quantitative aptitude exams where you just need to calculate quickly as time is scarce. What if you had a method that lets you calculate quickly and therefore provides you with some extra time? Yup, calculating quickly provides you with that competitive edge. Have you ever wondered whether there are some shortcut methods that let you save time? We bet you wish you knew about such methods. Then, you just need to revisit some ancient calculation methods and complex calculations will begin to seem so much easier. Yes, you heard it right. Ancient calculation methods. Seems you don't believe us. Then have a quick look at this calculation. Multiplying two five-digit numbers involves a lot of steps when we do it the conventional way. But here, the calculation has been performed in just two steps, and if you're mentally acute, you may as well jot down the answer in one single step. At this point, we will encourage you to pause the video and actually try doing the same calculation. Please note down the time it takes. Now have a quick look at another calculation. Again, the calculation has been performed in just two steps. We will again encourage you to pause the video and actually try doing the same calculation the conventional way. Please note down the time it takes. You might have noticed that we are using entirely different methods to perform the calculations. So, what's this? The ancient branch of knowledge we are sharing with you here is Vedic Mathematics. This is a form of mathematics that was practiced in ancient India. You might be wondering what all Vedic mathematics has that it can share with us? We assure you, there's lots. A huge untapped knowledge base. Let's explore it together. From performing simple to complex multiplication and division, finding squares, cubes, square roots, cube roots and highest common factor, calculating recurring decimals and sum and difference of squares, converting vulgar fractions to decimals, Vedic mathematics has it all. And you'll be surprised to know that you can even solve quadratic, cubic, and biquadratic equations. Differential calculus, integration, factorization of quadratic and cubic equations all can be done with the help of Vedic mathematics. And once you learn the tricks of the trade, you will cruise along, as you'll be able to do all this in double quick time. You'll be surprised to know that Vedic mathematics is really gaining popularity these days. But what are the reasons for that? Well, the reasons are simple. Vedic mathematics uses techniques that are simple and calculations can be performed mentally. The techniques are easy to learn and provide answers in a single, two, or relatively few steps. And, most of all, huge time savings are realized when you use these techniques. Huge time savings and simple, easy to learn techniques mean that students using these in school, college, or competitive exams gain a competitive advantage over their peers not utilizing such techniques. Many a times, some students fail to make the cut-off point in some competitive quantitative aptitude examination by just a whisker. These techniques empower students to gain just that extra push and excel. Careers depend on successfully clearing the exams and making that cut-off list. And, these techniques prove to be the differentiator between failing or succeeding. It's not that only the students benefit from these techniques. Parents, for one, can learn these and then teach them to their kids so as to provide them with a solid computational method. People who desire to increase their mental ability may learn them as well. And, you may also choose to learn them just for fun, if you are the type of person who likes to acquire new and diverse skills. We hope that you are excited by now to learn the nitty-gritty of how Vedic mathematics works, and how it can substantially reduce the time taken to arrive at answers and solutions. We are as excited to share, because your buddy believes that knowledge sharing leads to knowledge generation. Let's begin. Let's first talk about a special case i.e. multiplication by 9, 99, 900, and 99 and so on. We start with multiplication of a single digit number with 9. Let's say we need to multiply 6 by 9. In step 1, write 9. For step 2, we subtract 1 from 6. 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. Write 5 under 9. 
In step 3, subtract 5 from 9. 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. Write 4 after 5. 54 is the answer. That's it. No need to remember any tables. Please visualize that there are two separate parts in the answer. First part of answer is 5 and second part is 4. Interestingly, sum of both parts equals 9. And as you'll recall, we are multiplying by 9. Isn't that amazing? Let's say we need to multiply 8 by 9. In step 1, write 9. For step 2, we subtract 1 from 8. 8 minus 1 is equal to 7. Write 7 under 9. In step 3, subtract 7 from 9. 9 minus 7 is equal to 2. Write 2 after 7. 72 is the answer. That's it. Please visualize that there are two separate parts in the answer. We will talk about the significance of two parts of answer later in the video. First part of answer is 7 and second part is 2. Interestingly, sum of both parts equals 9. And as you'll recall, we are multiplying by 9. Isn't that amazing? So, when you are multiplying with 9, to get the first part of the answer, subtract 1 from the other number. Now, in case you are multiplying 9 by 9, the other number will be 9 itself. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 9. For example, when you multiply 9 by 5, 5 will be the number other than 9. The first part of answer will be 5 minus 1 i.e. 4 and the second part will be 9 minus 4 i.e. 5. The answer is 45. Once again, when you are multiplying with 9, to get the first part of the answer, subtract 1 from the other number. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 9. For example, when you multiply 9 by 6, the first part of answer will be 6 minus 1 i.e. 5 and the second part will be 9 minus 5 i.e. 4. The answer is 54. When you multiply 9 by 9, the first part of answer will be 9 minus 1 i.e. 8 and the second part will be 9 minus 8 i.e. 1. The answer is 81. The same logic will now be applied for multiplication by 99, 900, and 99, and so on. One important thing to remember is that this method has a limitation. Only single digit numbers can be multiplied with 9 using this method. Only numbers up to 2 digits can be multiplied with 99 using this method. Only numbers up to 3 digits can be multiplied with 999 using this method. Only numbers up to 4 digits can be multiplied with 9999 using this method. And, so on. So, for example, you can't multiply 99 with 567 by using this method as 567 has 3 digits. 9 has a single digit, so it can be multiplied with a single digit number only. 99 has 2 digits, so it can be multiplied with numbers up to 2 digits only. And so on. When you are multiplying with 99, to get the first part of the answer, subtract 1 from the other number. Now, in case you are multiplying 99 by 99, the other number will be 99 itself. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 99. For example, when you multiply 99 by 56, 56 will be the number other than 99. The first part of answer will be 56 minus 1 i.e. 55 and the second part will be 99 minus 55 i.e. 44. The answer is 5,544. To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 99. 55 plus 44 is 99, and so, our answer is correct. You might have noticed that we wrote 99 before we wrote anything else. We did this for ease of calculation. Doing this allows us to mentally subtract the first part of the answer from 9, 99, 900, and 99 and so on, depending upon which of them is being used for multiplication. Once again, when you are multiplying with 99, to get the first part of the answer, subtract one from the other number. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 99. For example, when you multiply 99 by 8, 
8 will be the number other than 99. The first part of answer will be 8 minus 1 i.e. 7 and the second part will be 99 minus 7 i.e. 92. The answer is 792. To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 99. 7 plus 92 is 99, and so, our answer is correct. Once again, when you are multiplying with 99, to get the first part of the answer, subtract one from the other number. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 99. For example, when you multiply 99 by 91, 91 will be the number other than 99. The first part of answer will be 91 minus 1 i.e. 90 and the second part will be 99 minus 90 i.e. 9. But remember, we need to write 09 and not 9. The answer is 9009. To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 99. 99 plus 09 is 99, and so, our answer is correct. Now, you need to remember that the second part of the answer always has a fixed number of digits. When we multiply by 9, the second part of answer has a single digit only. When we multiply by 99, the second part of answer has two digits only. When we multiply by 999, the second part of answer has three digits only. When we multiply by 9999, the second part of answer has four digits only. And so on. This explains why we used 09 and not 9 in the previous example. When you are multiplying with 999, to get the first part of the answer, subtract one from the other number. Now, in case you are multiplying 999 by 999, the other number will be 999 itself. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 999. For example, when you multiply 999 by 992, the first part of answer will be 992 minus 1 i.e. 991 and the second part will be 999 minus 991 i.e. 008. The answer is 991008. To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 999. 991 plus 008 is 999, and so, our answer is correct. Once again, when you are multiplying with 999, to get the first part of the answer, subtract one from the other number. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 999. For example, when you multiply 999 by 723, the first part of answer will be 723 minus 1 i.e. 722 and the second part will be 999 minus 722 i.e. 277. The answer is 722277. To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 999. 722 plus 277 is 999, and so, our answer is correct. Once again, when you are multiplying with 999, to get the first part of the answer, subtract one from the other number. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 999. For example, when you multiply 999 by 80, the first part of answer will be 80 minus 1 i.e. 79 and the second part will be 999 minus 79 i.e. 920. The answer is 79920. To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 999. 79 plus 920 is 999, and so, our answer is correct. Once again, when you are multiplying with 999, to get the first part of the answer, subtract one from the other number. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 999. For example, when you multiply 999 by 9, the first part of answer will be 9 minus 1 i.e. 8 and the second part will be 999 minus 8 i.e. 991. The answer is 8991. 
To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 999. 8 plus 991 is 999, and so, our answer is correct. When you are multiplying with 9999, to get the first part of the answer, subtract one from the other number. Now, in case you are multiplying 9999 by 9999, the other number will be 9999 itself. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 9999. For example, when you multiply 9999 by 9986, the first part of answer will be 9986 minus 1 i.e. 9985 and the second part will be 9999 minus 9985 i.e. 0014. The answer is 9985014. To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 9999. 9985 plus 0014 is 9999, and so, our answer is correct. Once again, when you are multiplying with 9999, to get the first part of the answer, subtract one from the other number. To get the second part of answer, subtract the first part of answer from 9999. For example, when you multiply 9999 by 578, the first part of answer will be 578 minus 1 i.e. 577 and the second part will be 9999 minus 577 i.e. 9422. The answer is 577922. To double check against miscalculation, check that sum of both parts of answer is 9999. 577 plus 9422 is 9999, and so, our answer is correct. Isn't that easy? And so fast. You can similarly calculate for 99,999, 900, and 99,999, and so on. Hope you can now apply the method with ease. Practice to perfect. You might be wondering how to calculate in case we need to multiply 99 by 345. 345 has three digits and so this method can't be used. Vedic Mathematics has another method for that and we will cover it in our coming videos and we will cover lots more squares cubes square and cube roots general multiplication division factorization quadratic equations and so on this is just the beginning of our vedic mathematics series awesome is yet to come keep watching We really hope that you liked our video as well as gained some useful info. We will continually post more and more interesting and informative videos in the upcoming future. So, please share our videos as much as possible. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to press the bell icon.